So welcome with Cooking with Dad, and today we are working with corn. This, can you see it? Yeah. This is a weird little contraption that I use for corn. I think I bought this one with a co-op, but I think you can also get it at Amazon. In fact, I know you can't because I ordered an extra one. Um, but I'm gonna show you how we like to cut corn off the cob and cook it. Well, no, I guess I will show you how to cook it uh, later. But right now I'm gonna show you how to cut it off of the cob. It's it's a pretty simple idea, but um, um, it, works really, it works really well. So um, here we go. I'll show you how to cut corn off the cob using this little corn cutter. I'm not sure what to call it. Corn creamer? Creamer, I think that's right. Okay, so this is the contraption, and you can see how it works. Well, I'll show you how it works. First, you know, the corn kind of goes down this little slot right here, and um, what happens is, the first thing that happens is this little thing here uh, cuts the kernel, and this is adjustable. See this little thing here? You can adjust it kind of in and out to adjust how deep it cuts. You may be able to see that it sits just above the, sorry, here, there we go. It sits just above the um, little groove here, and, it, and it's at the slide, as the corn slides through, it cuts the kernels, and the kernels fall out the bottom here. And then, these little fingers here, these little knives, kind of like grip the cob and, and all the stuff that's left that doesn't get cut out. It kind of like makes it sort of stand up and then this little scraper here at the end scrapes it up. the rest of the, the stuff it's called the milk actually from the, or the cream from the from the corn and um, and all that comes down <clears throat> now it's a great process and it works really well but the only thing is it it's a little cumbersome to use and this is the technique that I've found out that works the best is I wedge it into my sink like that and I put my whatever I'm going to cut it in, in this right here. Now I've already shucked the corn, I've already cleaned the corn, got practically all of the silks off the corn, but that's almost impossible to get 100%. But anyway, this is how we do it. So take the, I take the uh, the the narrow end first, go through here. Let's align it just right, and I hope I can do this. We can see it. I'm going to have to adjust my camera just a little bit here. Hold on. There you go, maybe that works. Um, and you just push through like that. See, it cuts that whole thing off and scrapes the end here. See how it scrapes that stuff off? Just turn it a little bit. And you need to go, you need to sort of go at it like you know what you're doing. <laughs> if you kind of try to go too slow, it just doesn't work well. The first time I tried to do this, I tried to sit it on top of the bowl and go that way, that just didn't work. This is the best way i found because I think you're just sort of wedging it in there and it gives you a little more control. But just shove it through. And that's what the cob looks like. I mean, it's there's, not, there's nothing really left in there. And you can go through these things pretty quick. I'll do another one for you. Ready? Turn. You might look through and realize, oh, there's a little bit left there. You can kind of get some more of that off there just to make sure it's good and clean. And that's it. So you can go through a lot of corn really fast. And then when you're done, you end up with something like this. Now, what I've found for our family of four is that we, um, if I put up a pack of six ears, typically that size ears, um, do six ears, that's usually enough to cook a meal with, you know. And um, and I'll put it up in the um, in the plastic bags, and I'll show you how I do that too. In just a minute, okay? All right. Okay. One last thing before I let you go here, I'm gonna do this last time. Is the stuff that's here, and you can kind of see how the blade. Let's set this down. How the blade um, cuts through and grabs all of this stuff here. This is really the good stuff. I think this is really where most of the flavor comes from. And so you really want to, I mean, you could take this blade off altogether and it wouldn't even scrape it and it would be a more of a niblet corn that you see. But honestly, this is, this is where the goodness is. It's where the cream, the corn cream comes from. 
And then also, when you hear creamed corn, typically it doesn't mean that you put cream in it. It means that you've gotten the cream from the kernel. You see how clean these kernels are? Like all of this stuff in here, all of that would be would be lost if you didn't have these little fingers and that little scraper at the end. And I think that's where the most of the flavor is. So when you go through, you want to try to push all the way through to the end. Don't focus on just this blade here. Almost forget the blade. Think about pushing this all the way to the end and keep your fingers kind of out of the way. Keep my fingers, keep my fingers sort of like this off to the side so that you don't, um, don't crack a knuckle <laughs> on that right there. So uh, I'm going to finish this cob up and I'll show you how to put it up. And then finally too, this makes kind of a mess. It can be kind of messy. So having it in the sink, if you can see how messy the sink is, there's a lot of, there's just a, it's kind of a violent act. So um, by doing it in the sink, I think kind of contains that a little bit, but by all means, do not lose, do not lose all this, this, um, this goodness here. Uh, we brought a bunch of fruit, so we got fruit flies in here now, some fresh fruit that we're trying to get rid of, but, um, um, they know it's good too. Just keep them away. Anyway, catch you in a minute. Okay. So when you're going to put it up to freeze, remember I use about six ears per gallon bag. That works out pretty well. You can put more in here for sure. But, um, um, one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you label it before <laughs> you put the corn in. Just makes it easier because it's flat. Um, so fresh corn. The date is the 60th. Oh, six, seven. I'm sorry. Eight, six, 21. Um, make sure you date it just so you know when you did it. Um, you might find a pack back in there and you're like, ooh, how old is this? So you want to do that. You want to get your spoon. I like to get a big spoon. Not the ladle. Sorry. Get the big spoon. And um, um, just throw it in the bag. But I'll show you something here before we seal it up. It's kind of important. Um, you can see, I don't know if you can see down in there. Uh, there's a lot of juice, a lot of liquid that's come out of that corn. That shows how much, and, and that's so much flavor. When you cook this corn, it just has so much flavor and it's so easy to cook. It's pretty sweet already. Um, and it just has such a good flavor. Now you can too, is you can grill this corn. I think I've done this a couple times. You can grill it on the grill and put some seasonings and stuff on it and uh and then cut it off after you've grilled it after it's cooked a little bit but you can't grill it too long if it's too mushy it won't work very well so here's what i do all right so I get the corn in there and what i like to do is i don't it's not sealed yet see i want to kind of roll it up and roll all that air out of there and then seal it like that so now you don't have a lot of air so you won't have as much um uh, like freezer burn in there or frost that will, that can collect. Um, I mean, I guess if you have like a, like a vacuum sealer or something like that, you can do that. But then I just sort of push it forward to fill this whole, this whole thing up here like that. Keep it pretty flat. And then if there's any more air, I did a pretty good job on that one. If there's any more air, you can kind of like open up a little, little thing here and just kind of push it out. And seal it up real good. I use a double seal for freezer bags and used freezer bags too, um, not just thin bags. And then I lay it in half so you can kind of see how that's just sort of a flat little piece and that'll fit in the freezer. And if you have a flat place in the freezer, or even if you want to just put it on a tray, you can put it on a tray and put, put that in, this, in the freezer and let it freeze until it's hard. And then you can like lay it up this way if you want, you know, you can lay it up. So it's vertical in the freezer. Stack it up like that. Um, but anyway, that's how we put up fresh corn. So just to show you, this is some corn already put up. It's already it's already frozen. Um, huh, that one got kind of messed up on the bottom. But I was just going to tell you is when you go to cook it later, 
you've already frozen it, you already froze it, you're ready to cook it, thaw it. Um, literally, you can just put this in the microwave for defrost, um, as if you're maybe defrosting a chicken, if it has a setting like that, or otherwise, do it for maybe three or four minutes, and then check it. After a while, this, this bag will defrost enough, because it's such a thin layer, that you can then open it up, so it's a full bag, and to finish defrosting, it literally doesn't take very long at all. You could also defrost it in water, just like in a big... If you have like a big pot or something like that, just put in some water and let it defrost. It doesn't take very long to defrost. And trust me, it tastes about 90% as good as fresh corn. It's pretty close. It's it's very, very good. So anyway, that's what it looks like when it's when it gets frozen.